Just over there is the seaside town where nearly 120 years ago, one of Britain's greatest writers took just 21 days to pen his most famous work. Where am I? We'll find out in just a moment. Today, our house hunters are buying their first home in over two decades. Will they be able to envisage their life in another house? I suppose the question is, could you put that homely feel into the house? Well, it's, it's certainly possible. And seeing what's on offer is a revelation. Oh, my goodness. Oh. We've never had an ensuite before. Oh. Today, I'm in West Sussex, and it was during a stay here in Worthing that Oscar Wilde wrote his famous play, The Importance of Being Earnest. He took inspiration from an article he read in the Worthing Gazette about a baby that had been discovered in a handbag at King's Cross Station. Now, Wilde named his hero Jack Worthing after the very place where he wrote what he himself described as the best play he'd ever written. And looking around, it's fair to say there's plenty to inspire the imagination across this beautiful county. And when it comes to buying a house here, that perfection comes at a price. Remember, we're looking at a coastal and a commutable county. And when you add those two ingredients together, you come up with a figure of £363,000, which is the average price of a detached home here in West Sussex, some £106,000 above the national figure. So, is it worth it? Well, when you look around, you see countryside and real estate like this, yeah, it probably is. And today's buyers certainly seem to think so. So let's meet them. Today's couple are David and Jill, who currently live in the town of Banstead, Surrey, on the edges of Greater London, a place they feel has changed over the years. Suburbia is, is creeping ever outwards, um, so whereas when we moved here, it, it did have a sort of village feel, now it's really almost all part of Greater London. We're looking forward to being in a more rural um, area because we've really had enough of all the traffic in the locality. But it's been a long time since they were last house hunting. So we've been here uh, 23 years, since, uh, pretty much since we got married. Our elder daughter is at university and our younger daughter, who has learning difficulties, has now gone to a residential training college. And we feel that we're no longer as, as tired as we were and uh, it just seems the right time to go. David and Jill's girls are very much part of the move. Although the girls are away, once they finish their education, who knows where they'll be. So we would need um, bedrooms for both of them. And in fact, the family will be growing. We've been joined in the move by, uh, by my mother. Um, she's very excited about moving. Her bags are packed. She doesn't have any requirements other than she wants her own little, little area and, and wants to be with us. For David and Jill, the move means starting a new kind of life together. When we move, we're, we're hoping very much to spend more time together, whether that be walking, cycling. I'd like to do some cooking. In fact, you enjoy cooking, yeah, don't do. you? Yeah. both enjoy cooking. To a certain extent, we will be getting to know one another again. It would just be a great opportunity to develop that new lifestyle in a, in a new place, in a new location. But one of their lifelong interests they are keen to continue we both enjoy gardening. We've done quite a lot to this garden, and we sort of feel that we've done all that now, uh, and it would be nice to move on to a new challenge. As they're moving out of one of the country's most expensive counties, they do have a good budget. The budget for the move is £850,000. As David and Jill want rural, we're moving inland from the West Sussex coastline and concentrating our search on the villages and towns in and around the South Downs National Park. I'm off to find out more details. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hello, Good morning. Johnny. So welcome both of you to West Sussex. Thank, Thank you. you. Why have you chosen West Sussex to come and relocate to? Well, we've come from Surrey yeah. and uh, West Sussex is a little more countryfied. OK. Looking to get a bit away, you know, away from the traffic but still be within sort of proximity of our friends and uh, you know, family around there. Uh, you, you've got someone to bring with you, haven't you? Yes, we've got my uh, elderly mother to bring with me. The mother-in-law? Yes. <laughs> you get on, I take it. We do. Good. That's a relief. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, are, are you just looking for a big house or a bit more separation with your living space? We'd like sort of separate space in some respects for her, whether that's within the, you know, under the same roof or yeah. maybe in a very, very close proximity. Okay. But it has to be your own sort of living area. So talk me through a day in the life of David and Jill in the countryside in West Sussex. Cook breakfast, 
<laughs> cup of coffee, wander around the grounds. The gr whoa, 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 the, the grounds. <laughs> a lot of people, when they come to the countryside, they want a bit of land around them. I've never heard them called grounds. I'm not, yeah, I'm not, let's be serious, no, no, no. but how, how much outside space do you want? Oh, up, up to an acre, I think, including the plot that the house sits on. We love gardening. So it would be nice to, you know, really do something with the gardens and some sort yeah. of landscaping or whatever. And how about the house itself? Are you prepared to take on a project there as well? Yeah, but not just a plot that we have to build a house on. <laughs> <laughs> Make my job pretty easy. <laughs> what does this house look like, then? It's got a bit of character, a little bit of character, but, but not low ceilings or, you know, not, not very beamy. Not like, oldie worldy. Of, yeah. Lots good of, good lots size of, rooms, airy. Yeah, lots of light. How many bedrooms in total? Three upstairs and one downstairs. So last, and by no means least, what's the budget? The budget is 850000 Good budget, actually. And is that, the, is that the final, final figure? We could uh, stretch a little bit beyond that for absolutely the right place with nothing to do. OK. And what sort of position are you in now? You've got your house on, this, on the market? We, ha we have a buyer ready. Have you? Yes. Well, it's sold, subject to contract? Yes. Yeah. What are we standing here for, then? Let's go. OK. So, for a handsome budget of £850,000, Jill and David are after a light, spacious house with three bedrooms upstairs, plus a downstairs living suite for David's mother. It needs a good-sized garden or plot for them to cultivate, and some country views. We've got some great houses to show them, but I won't be revealing the price until they've had a chance to guess first. And we've got the mystery house ready, which I think will be a very enticing option. So this move over here to West Sussex, what sort of things are you hoping to get up to in your spare time? Uh, I like clay pigeon shooting. This is getting very country sports now, isn't it? A bit of clay pigeon shooting. Yeah, it is, yes. And what about you, Jill? I have a qualification in British Sign Language and I'd like to perhaps use that right. with some, doing some voluntary work. Any style of property that you just don't like? Uh, I mean, they're different different houses I do and don't like, but I wouldn't class them as a particular style. That means it can be quite difficult to tie you down, though. Yes, that, that, is, that is true. But OK. I think, I think we'll know the house that, that we really like when we see it. Yeah. As soon as you walk through the door sometimes, isn't yeah, it? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. To start our search, we're going to the southern edge of the South Downs, to the town of Arundel. Arundel is a town that grew up around the Grand Hilltop Castle built under William the Conqueror. Today, this fortress vies for attention with the equally impressive Catholic Cathedral. Built in the 19th century, it's Grade 1 listed and regarded as one of the finest examples of Gothic Revival architecture. The town itself is full of restaurants, galleries, antique shops and boutiques, and it's just an hour and a half's train journey from central London. Just a few minutes from the edge of town, down a private country lane away from the neighbours, is our first house. Here is our first property. Wow. Very nice. Well, some of it is Victorian. Other parts of it are just a couple of years old. Right. Yeah. Blends in quite well. Yeah. Yeah, it looks very nice. So you know where you are, just a stone's throw from Arundel, really. Yep. yep. Which is, well, let's face it, absolutely gorgeous, isn't yes, it? Yes, absolutely. It is. That'd be a nice local town to go to, wouldn't it? Yep, um, indeed. So first impressions are... Very nice. Yeah, just nice. Nice, nice looking house. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's look inside. Okay. Originally two cottages which were joined together, the house is now over 3,000 square feet and is currently used as a holiday home. I'm hoping it will appeal to their desire for light and space. So, you can see why we've taken our shoes off. Yes. Brand new cream carpet. Wow. That Lovely. fire is beautiful. Good. Yeah, lovely, lovely open lounge. It's very light as well, isn't it? Very, yeah. very, very light but cosy at the same time. Well, this is the modern part of the house as well. Mm. And, you know, they've put things in like the picture rails, they've got, these, yeah. you know, decent windows, and I think this fireplace just sets it off, doesn't it? Very so, much yes. so. Moving through to the old part, mm -hmm. it's no less impressive. Follow okay. me. OK. So, a room big enough to hear your own echo. Yes. Beautiful. Very, very nice. It's fantastic size. That is beautiful. And with all, with all five of us here, we wouldn't be on top of each other. 
<laughs> no, not at all. I mean, beautiful. you told me about your daughter's coming back. Yep. This yes. is where you'd love to come back to, isn't yes. it? It still feels like a family home, doesn't it? Very it so. It's a very sociable space, isn't it? Yep. Don't you think? Yeah, yeah. No, it's a nice, and, nice and, dining area. And the light coming through there again is just beautiful. Now, let's talk about your mother, mm -hmm. your mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. She needs somewhere to live on the ground floor. Now, just past that stair there, there's a door going into a room which would make a perfect double bedroom, and next okay. door to that, there's an ensuite shower room and loo. Okay. Is that enough accommodation? Or is I think we, we definitely want her to have a sort of separate living area, you know, sort of sitting room type thing. OK. She could share a kitchen, that's, that's fine. Yeah. But we would definitely want her to have her own sort of, you know, sit, sitting room area. Well, in that case, then, your only option is to hive off some of this living area here. Right. Yep. You've got more than enough natural light, you could put a stub partition across. Yes. Yep. And there is a door going into that accommodation as yep. well there. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's possible. I mean, in some respects, of course, it would be a shame to... Partition such a lovely room there. Yeah, but it could work. Sure. Yeah. Now kitchen, you both love cooking, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. Let's have a look. There is a bit of work to do to create the perfect granny annex, but at least having so much ground floor space, there is still lots of living room for the family. Oh, that's lovely. Brilliant. So, you like them? Very much. much. Actually, we you could put a centre island in here. Yes, it would be nice to have just a little bit more workspace. So that would work a, well, wouldn't it? That's a good area, yeah. Now, the space is continued upstairs. The master bedroom is a whopper. Let me show you. OK. The large rear conservatory and a utility room off the kitchen round up the ground floor configuration. Upstairs, there is bags of room for them and their two daughters with four bedrooms and two bathrooms. And that doesn't include the enormous master suite. Now then. Oh, my goodness. My goodness me. En suite. We've never had an en suite before. No, certainly not. His and hers wash and basins. Mm. Fantastic. This is great, enormous, isn't great it? Great size room. Enormous. I and, like the and, height as well. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. And the colours as well. I, mean, I know you can just use a paintbrush, but we wouldn't. It, it, this no. very much suits yeah. our taste. Yeah. Good. OK, well, look, it's, it seems to be all working fairly well for you guys. Yeah, yeah. It is. Let's look outside of the garden and start thinking about price. All yes. right? Oh, yes. Lead the way. The garden to the rear is an expanse of lawn and mature borders. It's a great plot for their landscaping plans. Now, garden-wise, what do you think? Big enough? Yeah, good size and, and a good shape. Nice square shape with mature plants. Yeah, lovely. Yeah, that, that would work. So how much do you think this house is on the market for? I think... 825,000. OK. And that's exactly the same as I was going to say. Ooh. So, um... I'd like it to be 810. OK, well... This house is on the market for offers around eight hundred and fifty thousand pounds. Okay. I, I think. I think that's reasonable. I'd, yeah. I'd, I'd be putting it on at that price if it were mine to sell. So, yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah. Well, look, you've had good reactions inside. When you go back in, have a good look around maybe your mum's accommodation, but also yeah. have a look around all the bedrooms upstairs that you haven't yet seen. Yes. Yeah. And I'll meet you whenever we're done. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Lovely. Catch Thanks. you in a bit. Thanks. Okay. So, at the top end of the budget of £850,000, this renovated Victorian property gives five bedrooms, spacious open-plan living rooms, the potential to have a granny annex, and it's all set in a half-acre plot. The house is very light and airy on the ground floor. Uh, it's all open-plan. I very much like that the house has um, six bedrooms, which includes the bedroom for mum downstairs. The garden is a lovely size, lovely shape, and it has mature plants, um, all, all of which are a bonus. It's perhaps a little bit too isolated um, for us. I think it would be nice to have one or two neighbours nearby. I could see myself living in this property, but I'm not sure that it works for my mother. There's not quite enough space for her, and I can't quite see how we would actually add the extra room that, we're, that I think she'd need. You know what, I thought I'd find you in here, because... This seems to be the only slight sticking point from that whole, this whole yeah. house and the tour that I saw. Yeah. So why don't you have a think about this on the journey to the next house? OK. okay. Yeah? Cool. Let's go. Let's go.
part of David and Jill's move to the countryside is a desire to claim a slice of rural life for themselves. And right in the middle of our property search is a place dedicated to keeping the county's rural heritage alive. The Wealdon Downland Open Air Museum is a 50-acre site which spans over 600 years of history, depicting the lives of those who lived and worked in the Sussex countryside between 1300 and 1900. Mindful that David and Jill are keen gardeners and cooks, we arrange for them to meet life interpreter Leslie Parker to find out more. What are all these amazing buildings here? They're all rescued. They would have been destroyed for one reason or another. Road widening, um, reservoirs being built, um, gravel pits. So if we're offered a building, uh, it's taken down literally piece by piece, like taking a jigsaw puzzle apart, oh. and then it's re-erected here, wow. um, literally piece by piece. And how many buildings are here? Um, over 50 now. Wow. These are all what we today would call working class houses, although, of course, that's not an expression they would have used in the past. Um, and we've got everything from 1300s, um, very much a peasant house, um, up to Bayleaf, our Tudor farmhouse here, is probably the um, most well off one of all the houses we have on the site uh -huh. and we have the gardens which are a huge resource as well uh -huh. I understand that's something you're interested in very much so um, yes so maybe if you'd like to have a look at Bayleaf's yes, Tudor garden we'd love to thank Lovely. you the Bayleaf garden was created in 1989 and is a recreation of a late medieval garden which would have been laid out in blocks of beds Tudors employed a wholly organic method of gardening finding a use for everything We've got lots of different plants here. Um, in the herb beds, we've got herbs that are for cooking. We've got herbs that are for medicinal use. We've got plants that would help keep the bed bugs from your mattress. <laughs> and which ones keep the bed bugs from the mattress? <laughs> and well, tansy is a good one, which is actually this plant behind you here. All right. Because the leaves are very bitter, and people picked it. They hung bunches at windows and doorways, and they would put sprigs under things like mattresses as well. And do you use some of them in cooking? This one is called winter savoury. It's not such a common herb today. That was particularly recommended also to help um, problems with flatulence. <laughs> um, so they often put that in recipes with beans and peas. Right. It's slightly like lavender, isn't it? It's got a slight well, lavender well, smell. Mm. Some people think it's more like a, a sort of thyme oregano cross. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. yes. And then, of course, we've got lots of vegetables, including some we're using today. At the moment, we've got things like parsnips and leeks, leaf beets. We were talking about winter savoury as a more unusual herb of the time. So if we use that in our pottage, if you'd like to just pick a little bit more Lovely. each. OK, thank you. And then we'll head over to, to Winkhurst, our Tudor kitchen, and do some cooking. David and Jill have seen what ingredients were cultivated by Tudor society. It's time to head to the kitchen and prepare a common Tudor dish called pottage. So what we're going to do here is cook a very basic seasonal pottage, right. a one-pot meal. That's all that means. What we're going to do is start by chopping an onion. First, onions are fried and then the vegetables are added. Pottage can be made from any vegetables and meat. It was the staple of Tudor society and the main meal for most families from the poor to the wealthy. It was just the ingredients that differed. To add bulk and thicken the dish, barley soaked in ale is added. And the final ingredients, winter savoury and leaf beet collected from the garden, are put in the pot. Time to find out if this Tudor dish is any good. Mmm, it's lovely, isn't it? Mmm. Very sweet. It's got quite a lot of spice and flavour in it, mm. hasn't it? It has, yeah. Having sampled an historic snapshot of West Sussex, it's time to spool forward to the present day and serve up our next property. For house number two, we're going ten miles further inland to Polborough, a large village on the northern edge of the South Downs. Polborough dates back to Roman times and is one of the larger villages in West Sussex. With a population of around 5,000, it has a good number of shops, pubs and other amenities. Three miles from the centre of the village, down a long country lane, is property number two. So, a completely different kettle of fish for property number two. Very much so. What do you think? It looks a little bit like a chalet bungalow. I see what you mean. Yeah, well, it's, it, it looks like a one storey with one storey above. Yeah. Take my word for it, it doesn't feel like that inside. Okay. This is a good-sized family home. Now, of course, you couldn't fail to see that 
we've just gone past the Victorian Castle. Yes, I'm not keen. Not keen, how so? Perhaps feeling a little overlooked, maybe. OK. Um, well, I'll tell you this. That's a good point. The house faces that away. So are the views. But I thought, with having that there and there's another neighbour way over the other side, you wouldn't feel so isolated. Okay. Yeah. But, you know. yeah. Let's see how you feel when you get inside the house, shall we? OK. okay. Let's go. So, this feels very much more the living room, doesn't it? Yeah, yep. this is yeah. lovely. Up and fire. Yeah. A good size and, again, lots of windows. Very nice. Are you getting a feel of what you might do with these spaces? Well, yes, I was thinking perhaps making this the uh, for more formal dining room um, and then perhaps the, the room that is currently the dining room make that uh, perhaps a, a space for the youngsters. Mm. Yeah, mm. not a bad idea. Mm. And that's what this house gives you. It's very flexible. Yeah. You know, you've got 3,000 square feet to play with here. Wow. Goodness me. It's a big house. Mm. Yeah, it is big. Let me show you where your mum might be staying. Yeah. Okay. These family rooms form one wing of the downstairs layout. The other wing is where a suite of rooms are located, which could be a perfect annex for David's mum. So, right at this end of the house, there's as much privacy for your mother as she yep. wants, really. Yep. You think this is a living room? Yes. But is it? Because you've got an ensuite there. Ah. Yep. OK. So this could be... The bedroom, if you want some suite, or yeah. the living room, and you've got a study next door, which would be either the bedroom or the living yes. room. Yep. Right. And then the other side of the corridor, there's a utility room for the house, which is easily big enough to be a kitchen. Yes. Ah. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So she could have her entire annex, a wing. Right. Yes. I could see that. Yeah. She would like that, I think. That's a very attractive proposition. Yeah. And it's a, this is a very nice size yeah. for her. No, that would work well. So far, so good? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Right. on the right track. Good. Onwards and upwards. Mm -hmm. Follow me. What's on offer for David's mother is a definite winner in this house, and there are some great options for their daughters upstairs. Built into the eaves of the house, there are three good-sized double bedrooms to choose from, all with ceiling windows and lots of natural light. There are two bathrooms, so the girls can have one each, and all of this doesn't include the main bedroom for Jill and David. Now, I want you to see what I call the master suite, so mm -hmm. pretty Ooh. funky bathroom. Very yeah. nice. But this bedroom also gives you a rather nice balcony. Ooh. Oh, lovely. Have a good look. That looks fabulous, doesn't it? Very nice. And on a clearer day, that's a view right over the South Down. Yeah. Beautiful. Bear in mind there's lots of, you know, there's en suites up here as well. There's enough privacy for your three generations of family yeah. to spend time here, yeah, which I thought absolutely. was pretty good. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I think yes. that would work. work OK. Yeah, very much so. Good. All right, so let's go and brave the weather again and okay. start thinking about price. OK. Yep. Not an easy okay. one, this, is it? No, it's not. As well as the size and great layout, the views are a real bonus with this house. However, it is currently used as a holiday let, so it doesn't have the feel of a home that's lived in full-time. Outside, the garden is an undeveloped half-acre, ready for the attention of some green fingers. This probably isn't the best day to be saying, is it a nice out here, <laughs> is this what you had in mind? But imagine this on a clearer day. Nice? Very nice. I can see it working for us. Thank it's a blank canvas, good. too. We can do with it as we wish. Do you remember when we first walked up, you said, oh, it looks like a chalet bungalow. It's in, you know, almost underneath the Victorian castle. What do you think now we've looked around? I think it's, uh, it's a great space inside. It's yeah. absolutely right for us. So, practicality-wise, I think that's spot on. OK. Does Sounds it, like the butt there. Does it feel entirely like a home? No. I think you're right. I mean, on paper, it's, it's perfect and some. I mean, it's everything we, we, we could ever want. So, how much do you think it's on the market for? Uh, yeah, it's a difficult one. Um, Say eight thirty. Okay, Jill. I think it's considerably more than that. I think it's eight seven five. Not a bad guess, Jill. It's on the market for offers around eight hundred and sixty thousand pounds. Okay. So, practically, you think it's spot on. Yep. Can you make this house a home? When you go back inside, have a look around all of the rooms. There's lots of it. Yeah. 
and start to think about could you move into this place? Could you warm it up if you like? Right. Okay. All right. Lovely. Thank I'll you. See you later on. Thank Lovely. you. So, for £860,000, this substantial house offers four bedrooms upstairs, potential for a self-contained annex downstairs, a half acre of garden and fantastic views over the South Downs. The, the floor space is great, the configuration downstairs is, is perfect, the configuration upstairs is perfect. Uh, it would work well for us. The longer I spend in this house, the more it's appealing to me. It's got everything we could want and more and it's perfect for David's mum. Just have a, a niggle that there's something missing, and, I, and I, I can't put my finger on it. I think it's that feeling that is missing. It would be nice to perhaps come back and see what we could do to make it our own. So you get a sort of 90 degree panorama all the way around. You can see why they put the balcony here, can't you? You certainly can. And it's so peaceful. Yeah, lovely. So, you can see some of the view even on a day like today, can't you? Yeah, yes. it's beautiful. Had a good look around? Yeah, yep. thank you. Yeah. Well, this is the last thing we'll see today, so let's take you back and hopefully you've got something to think about tonight. OK. Plenty right. to think about. Off to you. Thank you. It's our last day of house hunting with David and Jill, who are looking to move from Banstead, Surrey, to West Sussex, with a budget of £850,000. Coming up, I've still got some surprises for our buyers. It wasn't what I expected at all. It has a really homely feel. And I find out about one of our country's great aviation triumphs. I've got nothing to compare that to, but that sounds That's pretty amazing. It's That's awesome. So here we are, a beautiful day, two properties down, both of which I think married David and Jill's shopping list. But there still seems to be something missing. So I'm somewhat relieved to be taking them both to the mystery house, as, let's face it, it normally stirs things up a bit. Now, I think they're both going to enjoy looking around the house itself. It has a lovely, homely feel to it. The garden is a good size, albeit on a bit of an angle, which could be a challenge. And there's even potential for a granny annex. But when I say potential, it is potential, but with a capital P. For our mystery house, I'm taking David and Jill 15 miles north to the village of Fenhurst, close to the West Sussex and Surrey border. One of the northern gateways to the South Downs National Park, Fenhurst is surrounded by five hills and miles of walking trails. It's a classic rural village with a church dating back to Norman times. Now, this village, well, it gives you everything. What do you want from a village these days? You've got your pub, yep. of course, you've got your shops, you've got Shop. a good, vibrant community. Yep. Yep. Now, rumour has it that apparently the last wild bear in England was killed here. Mm. Now, whether or not that's true, what I do like to believe is the ghost of that bear <laughs> haunts this whole area. Wow. So, is that putting you off? No. Nah. nah. Good. All right, let's dig along to the mystery house. Okay. Lovely. Three miles up the road through Woodland is our final property. So, atop this hill is our mystery house. Very yeah. nice. I'm very aware of the slope. Right, OK. And an 88-year-old mother-in-law. Uh, let's just ignore my mother for a moment. That's a very <laughs> nice house. It is a very <laughs> nice house. It is. I know you love gardening. Yep. Yeah. There's terracing that can be done here. Some landscaping yep. can be done, yeah. That'd sure. be good. Yeah. But the mystery here, if you like, is the fact that there's work to be done to yep. this house. Yeah. Okay. And that is making it a bit more... OAP friendly mm -hmm. yes. for your mum, yep. and also maybe converting some of her accommodation later on. Okay, let's look inside. Okay. With approaching half an acre of mature secluded gardens, there's plenty to keep David and Jill busy outdoors. But given they're finding it hard visualising their life in another house, it's the inside that I really want them to see. So, the kitchen, very different feel to what we've seen so far. Wow. Lovely. It's beautiful. It's a real country kitchen, isn't it? Yeah, and also, do you not think it feels really homely? Very much so. It does. I mean, it's, you know, great dining area, lovely view over the garden. Yeah. Good-sized kitchen as well, loads of workspace. Spot on. Good, Good stuff? stuff? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Stuff. Right then, yep. let's go to this sitting room. Let me just okay. squeeze past here. There are two living rooms in our mystery house, one which has views out to the garden and the other which is larger and L-shaped. Now, 
the living room or one of the living rooms. Pretty big. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is. It's a lovely, cosy room. I think the, the, the fact that someone lives here permanently really brings the house alive. Yeah. You can see yourselves making this a home. Yes. Yep. This is a nice, quiet, slightly darker room. Yeah. The other one's much more open and, and, and light. Well, the other reception we walked past, yeah, it has those nice big windows that you could see maybe opening out onto the garden. Yeah. yeah. So the two receptions have two quite different functions, yes. don't they? Yeah. yeah. Good. All right. Let's have a look at one of the bedrooms. OK. OK. The final rooms downstairs are a small corridor office and a utility room. Upstairs, there are three bedrooms for their daughters to choose from and a bathroom for them to share. All of this is separate from the main bedroom suite. So the master, well, has the best view. Look at that. Yeah. It's beautiful. Nice and light. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. It's good. Yeah. It, it gives it a nice feeling inside. Yeah, so it, it wasn't what I expected at all. Um, it has a, as I say, it has a really homely feel. OK, yep. well, this is good. Yep. Yep. Let's go and have a look at an idea for some accommodation for your mum, Dave. Can I just okay. squeeze through the middle of it? Yes, yeah, sure. Thanks. For this house, I have a different proposition for a granny flat, a standalone annex just across from the main house. So, as you can see, the top we've got a collection of outbuildings. Now, this mm -hmm. was originally converted to be a teenager's den, and right. then they started to make upgrades to turn it into a granny annex. The circumstances along the way changed. What you've got here is a footprint right. of buildings. Okay. So, the ability for annex, yep. a garden or be on a bit of a slope, and a really lovely family home. Yep. How much? I think probably seven... seven, six, five. Okie doke. David? I'd say 7.50. Well, you may well be surprised to hear, then, this mystery property is on the market for offers around £850,000. Is it? Yeah. Good heavens. Oh, we were wrong, weren't we? We were. It's something to think about, and hopefully, and I really mean this, something to compare against the first two properties. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. This, there's, a, there's a reason why we've looked at all these three properties. There's a big thing you're, you're mm. embarking upon. Oh, the yes. first house in 23 years. Yes. Yep. So, go back to the garden. Yep. Have a look at it. Yep. And start to think about this place in relation to everything we've seen. Sure. All right? OK. okay. Catch you later. Like so, at the top of their budget of £850,000, they get a beautiful hillside house with a stunning interior. Four bedrooms, two living rooms and potential for a separate annex. When I first saw the property, I was uh, a little aghast at the garden, um, thinking about uh, David's mum and, um, and Slope. Um, although, obviously, she wouldn't be out there gardening with us, I just felt it was a bit restrictive for her. I think space for my mother could work. There's enough square footage there to actually turn that into uh, a self-contained granny annex for her. If it were on the same level, I think that would work perfectly well. It's a good property to see, notwithstanding the fact that it has some, some challenges in terms of slope and, uh, mm. and access for mum. It's this beautiful elevated position that I think is going to be the big problem with this house. Shame, though. Now then, you survived the steep garden. There's no, there's no mud on your knees. No. Nope. Do you enjoy looking around that house? Very, Very much, much so, yeah. yeah. Well, we should find somewhere for you to have a bit of a chinwag. Okay. okay. Come with me. Okay. Being on the south coast, West Sussex has always played a strategic role in the country's security, and no more so than during World War II. I'm off to Tangmere Aviation Museum near Chichester, which is on the site of a former RAF base which was crucial in defending the south against the Luftwaffe. I'm meeting retired squadron leader Dudley Hooley to find out more. Dudley, thanks Hello, so much Joy. for seeing me today. How well, are you? It's a great pleasure. Very well, thank you. What an exciting place to be, is it? Well, as a boy that grew up next to an airfield with planes going over. To see these up close and personal is yeah. an absolute treat. Now, tell me, Tangmere itself, I, I suppose, is it the proximity to the coast? 
behind its existence and its importance? That's a great part of it. Yeah. Because Tangmere was the premier base in the south of England, controlled six other bases here during the Battle of Britain. That's probably when it became most famous. So you'd have had hurricanes and spitfires taking off from this base then, would you? Mm -hmm. Primarily hurricanes here. Right. Spitfires were operating from Goodwood Airfield and the hurricanes would go after the bombers, the spitfires would go after the accompanying fighters. I also understand uh, you have a very famous son here at Tangmere. Yeah. Douglas Bader, uh, who else? Yeah. That uh, he came here in 1941 with the first of the big wings. Douglas Bader was a wing commander at Tangmere in 1941. He was one of the most famous fight races of the Second World War due to his prolific record of shooting down 20 enemy aircraft in a short space of time. But he was also hugely inspirational because he achieved all of this after having lost his legs in an aviation accident in 1931 and used two artificial limbs. I didn't realise until recently that he'd already lost his legs by the time the Second World War came around. He, yes. he, he put his hand up and said, no, I, I want to volunteer again. That's right, he did, yes. And once he did become involved in the effort, if you like, the war effort, he obviously inspired a lot of young pilots. Yes, yes, he did, because the uh, people would look at him and say, a, a little bit like the Paralympic Olympians today, that if he can do that without any legs, yeah. then as an able-bodied person, that's something for me to aspire to. But he, he was an absolutely brilliant um, pilot. Staffed entirely by volunteers, the museum has lovingly restored a total of 16 iconic planes, including two jet fighters from the Cold War era. Now, Dudley, I'm starting to grin from ear to ear just to be close to these amazing aircraft. Let's talk about the Hawker Hunter. OK, this is the, the Hawker Hunter. In military terms, it's a DFGA, right. a day fighter ground attack aircraft. OK. This was probably the most loved aeroplane, second only to the Spitfire in the RAF. Really? Uh, it, Why is that? It flew beautifully. And then a number of years later, along came this. And I've got to say, they don't even look related. The Lightning just look, it looks huge and very different. The Lightning jet fighter was a supersonic aircraft. Introduced as an interceptor, it could fly at Mach 2, twice the speed of sound. It was a brute of an aeroplane, designed to get off the ground very, very quickly, get up to 50,000 feet, intercept the Russian bombers, uh, if necessary, shoot them down. This is Cold War time. This is the muscle car of the jet plane world, isn't <laughs> it? <laughs> You're absolutely right. It, its performance was, was astonishing. It had a 50,000 feet per minute rate of climb. I've got nothing to compare that to, but that sounds that's, pretty amazing. That's, that's awesome. One of the original test pilots, George Aird, when asked uh, what was it like to fly, he said, well, I was in total control of this aeroplane until I released the brakes. <laughs> <laughs> The feats achieved by the incredible engineering of these planes is astonishing, and I could spend all day here. But it's time to get back to the house hunt. So, three properties down. The big question is how we finally found that missing ingredient for David and Jill. Well, we've given them some thinking time. Let's find out their thoughts. So, after some thinking time, What's your favourite house? Number two. You both agreed on that? Absolutely. Yep. Right, OK. Well, we looked at property number two in not great weather, mm -hmm. yet it was still your favourite, and you didn't have great first reactions either, did you? I wasn't keen on the outward appearance of the property, but once we got in and the views were just beautiful. Lovely location, um, great view, very practical inside. So, let's pick up on that. You said it's practical. Looking around the house, you said that at the same time, but you struggled to get the feel of a family home when walking around. Have you thought about that some more, then? Yes, I mean, I, I think there are things we could do to, to make it more of, of a home. Whether it's the right one for us, I'm still not sure. It's a, it's a big move from it works, there's great views, to do we love it. Yeah. And it's very difficult to get to the do we love it when it's a bit cold because it's not lived in and it hasn't got the, the furniture and the knickknacks in and it's difficult to bridge that gap. It's tough, isn't it? Because after living in, a, in one house for so long, in one place, the thought of choosing your next house for maybe the next quarter of a century 
It's tough going, isn't it? Very tough. It is, and we, we haven't really looked very much um, other than on the internet. And if anything, this, this journey has told us that we, we need to look at the properties inside. Yeah. A absolutely. I know, it's, it's been a pleasure showing you these houses because you've been a bit rusty, haven't you? You've not looked at houses for so long. It's Just been opening a the door on something else. Just a bit, yeah. But whatever you decide to do, and wherever you decide to go, do please let us know, won't you? Indeed we will. Thank you so much for all you've done. Good luck. Thank Thanks you. very much. So, by the sounds of it, David and Jill have been on a bit of a journey these past couple of days. And whilst they both freely admit that house number two gives them everything they set out to achieve, for them, there seems to be one thing missing, and that's that feeling of home. But, of course, as we all know, Home is what you make it. And if they do go back there for the second viewing, they'll hopefully see past what isn't there and imagine the house with all of their stuff in it. And if they're able to do that, then they should be at least one step closer to making their big move here to West Sussex. See you next time. David and Jill have been back to West Sussex to look at more properties and have even upped their budget. But the search for a house with the right accommodation for them, their daughters and David's mother continues. If you'd like to escape to the country in Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland, England or perhaps even further afield to the continent and need our help, please apply online at bbc.co.uk forward slash be on the show. Just over there is the seaside town where nearly 120 years ago, one of Britain's greatest writers took just 21 days to pen his most famous work. Where am I? We'll find out in just a moment. Today, our house hunters are buying their first home in over two decades. Will they be able to envisage their life in another house? I suppose the question is, could you put that homely feel into the house? Well, it's, it's certainly possible. And seeing what's on offer is a revelation. Oh, my goodness. Oh. We've never had an ensuite before. No. Today, I'm in West Sussex, and it was during a stay here in Worthing that Oscar Wilde wrote his famous play, The Importance of Being Earnest. He took inspiration from an article he read in the Worthing Gazette about a baby that had been discovered in a handbag at King's Cross Station. Now, Wilde named his hero Jack Worthing after the very place where he wrote what he himself described as the best play he'd ever written. And looking around, it's fair to say there's plenty to inspire the imagination across this beautiful county. And when it comes to buying a house here, that perfection comes at a price. Remember, we're looking at a coastal and a commutable county. And when you add those two ingredients together, you come up with a figure of £363,000, which is the average price of a detached home here in West Sussex, some £106,000 above the national figure. So, is it worth it? Well, when you look around, you see countryside and real estate like this, yeah, it probably is. And today's buyers certainly seem to think so. So let's meet them. Today's couple are David and Jill, who currently live in the town of Banstead, Surrey, on the edges of Greater London, a place they feel has changed over the years. Suburbia is, is creeping ever outwards, um, so whereas when we moved here, it, it did have a sort of village feel, now it's really almost all part of Greater London. We're looking forward to being in a more rural um, area because we've really had enough of all the traffic in the locality. But it's been a long time since they were last house hunting. So we've been here uh, 23 years, since uh, pretty much since we got married. Our elder daughter is at university, and our younger daughter, who has learning difficulties, has now gone to a residential training college. And we feel that we're no longer as, as tired as we were, and uh, it just seems the right time to go. David and Jill's girls are very much part of the move. Although the girls are away once they finish their education, who knows where they'll be. So we would need um, bedrooms for both of them. And in fact, the family will be growing. We've been joined in the move by, uh, by my mother. Um, she's very excited about moving. Her bags are packed. She doesn't have any requirements other than she wants her own little, little area and, and wants to be with us. For David and Jill, the move means starting a new kind of life together. 
When we move, we're, we're hoping very much to spend more time together, whether that be walking, cycling. I'd like to do some cooking. In fact, you enjoy cooking, yeah, don't do. you? Yeah. both enjoy cooking. To a certain extent, we will be getting to know one another again. It would just be a great opportunity to develop that new lifestyle in a, in a new place, in a new location. But one of their lifelong interests they are keen to continue we both enjoy gardening. We've done quite a lot to this garden, and we sort of feel that we've done all that now, uh, and it would be nice to move on to a new challenge. As they're moving out of one of the country's most expensive counties, they do have a good budget. The budget for the move is £850,000. As David and Jill want rural, we're moving inland from the West Sussex coastline and concentrating our search on the villages and towns in and around the South Downs National Park. I'm off to find out.